Sairam students, welcome to another session of English literature. And today's session, we will begin with a new lesson from your textbook, Footprints Without Feet. This is lesson number six, and the name of the lesson is The Making of a Scientist by Robert W. Peterson. Robert Peterson was born in 1925 and he passed away in the year 2006. He was an American newspaper writer who later became a freelance author of magazines, articles and books, especially on the topics of sports and scouting. He was raised in Pennsylvania and he also played baseball while attending the Uppsala College. He was a writer and editor with the old New York World Telegram newspaper, which folded in the year 1966. And he passed away, like I told you before, he passed away on February 11, 2006 because of lung cancer. So here we have Robert Peterson. Basically, this lesson is about Richard Ebright. He was a well-known scientist. So what is this lesson all about? Richard Ebright has received the Searle Scholar Award and the Shering Plough Award for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. So he was very fond of, you know, butterflies. And because of this, the world of science was opened to him. The story about Richard Ebright, who grew up in the town of Reading in Pennsylvania in United States of America. So basically, this lesson is a story about Richard Ebright. As he did not have much to do there, collecting things was his hobby. He used to collect butterflies as a child in kindergarten. Let's read how this curious child who collected butterflies went on to become the greatest scientist of the world. So this, uh, so you know, because of collecting butterflies, the world of science was opened to him. And that led him to make some discoveries. And that is why he was considered as the greatest scientist of the world. So before we start, a gentle reminder to all of you to keep a book and a pen ready to jot down all the important points. The making of a scientist. At the age of 22, a former scout of the year excited the scientific world with a new theory on how cells work. Richard Ebright and his college roommate explained the theory in an article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. So at a very young age, he was just 22, okay, he he gave the world a new theory of how cells work. He, along with his college roommate, they explained the theory in an article in the proceeding of the National Academy of Science. It was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students. So all this while, you know, uh, there was no work of any college student that was published in this journal. And it was the first time, you know, a college student was, you know, college student's uh, journal was getting published. His work was getting published. In sports, that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first time at bat. So he is saying that if you want to speak this in the sports terminology, 
we can say it, you know for the very first time you're playing baseball and for the very first time you're playing for a big league for a big club and you happen to you know hit a home run so what's a home run so home run what happens in a home run is you hit the ball so hard that it goes very far and then it gives you a chance to run uh, run all the way around the four corners of the playing field so that makes one one complete home run and this is basically you know it deals with baseball so for richard de bride it was the first time in long strings of achievement in science and other fields and it all started with butterfly so this was the very first achievement first in the long string of achievements so he have he has achieved many things in his life and this was the first one and how did this start this this basically began with butterflies an only child a bride grew up north of reading pennsylvania there wasn't much i could do there he said I certainly couldn't play football or baseball with a team of one. But there was one thing I could do, collect things. So where did he reside? Basically, he was born and brought up in Pennsylvania. So there was there wasn't much he could do there. Why? Because he was all alone. He is saying that you know you cannot play football or baseball or all alone over there. but he said being alone there was one thing that he could do and that was collecting things collecting things means you know there are children who love to collect collect stamps there are children who love to collect coins and he loved to collect butterflies so he did and did he ever beginning in kindergarten a bride collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activities he also collected rocks fossils and coins he became an eager astronomer too sometimes stargazing all night so what he did he started collecting butterflies and from when from the age of you know when he was in kindergarten kg okay he started collecting butterflies and with the same determination he mark he has marked all his activities which means whatever he has done in his life with the same determination with which he began collecting butterflies he also collected rocks fossils and coins so what else did he collect he collected rocks small stones then he also collected fossils what are, what are fossils fossils are basically dead remains of plants and animals and then he also collected coins he also became an eager astronomer and he used to gaze stars all night with the help of telescope from the first he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind He also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning. She took him on trips, bought him telescopes, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials and other equipments and helped him in many other ways. So what is driving curiosity? He was very curious and his curiosity was a driving force behind him. becoming a very bright man he also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning so yes his mother also supported him how she took him on trips bought him telescopes microscopes cameras and mounting material so he she bought him all these things so that he could do his research work properly so what are mounting materials basically you know the stand on which you place your telescope or camera so that you can do your work properly that is called as a mounting material so and also she bought many other equipments which helped him in many other ways 
I was his only companion until he started school his mother said after that i would bring bring home friends for him but at that but at night we just did things together richie was my whole life after his father died when richie was in third grade so here we have a few lines spoken by uh, richard ebright's mother what do, what does she say she says that she was his only companion only friend until he started going to school and once he started doing that she would ask his friends to come home and what did they do they do at night at night we just did things together together they used to do many things she also says that richie was her life after her husband passed away that is richard ebright's father passed away when richard was in grade 3 she and her son spent almost every evening at the dining room table if he, if he didn't have things to do i found work for him not physical work but learning things his mother said he liked it he wanted to learn so she says that you know almost every evening at the dining room table okay they if he, if he didn't have anything to do she would get him some work to do and that was not household work that was not at all any physical work that she is talking about work related to some learning where you could learn something new and he simply loved it why because he wanted to learn he was greedy for knowledge and learn he did he earned top grades in school on everyday things he was just like every other kid his mother said by the time he was in the second grade ibright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown so he was you know he he wanted to learn and yes he did that and he got top grades when he was in school his mother said that you know like he was just like every other kid and by the time he was in grade 2 he had collected 25 species of butterfly butterfly sorry in and around his hometown so where he lived around that area only he collected some 25 species of butterflies so here we have the list of the butterflies that he has collected moving ahead that probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting he said but then my mother got me a children's book called the travels of monarch pen that book which told how monarch butterflies migrate to central america opened the world of science to the eager young collector so after he saw you know the after he collected these 25 butterflies 25 species of butterflies he thought that was an end that's all but then one day his mother gifted him a book that was the travels of monarch ten and that told him that how these butterflies the monarch butterflies they migrate to central america and this opened the world of science to the eager young collector so who is this eager young collector yes it's richard ebright at the end of the book readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations they were asked to tag butterflies for research by dr frederick a yokohart of the university of toronto canada so after he, after you know at the end of the book the readers were invited to study the migration the you know the butterfly migration and they were asked to tag what do you mean by tag on butterflies they used to put the small small stickers okay and 
They were asked to tag butterflies for research by Dr. Frederick A. Yukohart of University of Toronto, Canada. So they were asked to put the stickers which used to, you know, if in case they are studying that particular butterfly, they would put a sticker on it. And if anybody else found it, they would, they would give it to Dr. Frederick A. Yukohart. Ebright's mother wrote to Dr. Yokohart and soon Ebright was attaching light adhesive tags, tags to the wings of monarchs. Anyone who found a tagged butterfly was asked to sing the tag to Dr. Yokohart. So Richard Ebright's mother wrote a letter to Dr. Yokohart, you know, telling him that his son is interested in studying butterflies. So even he started tagging butterfly he started you know attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs and it was it was said that anyone who found the tagged butterfly was asked to send the tag to dr yukohart the butterfly collecting season around reading last six weeks in late summer so reading is the place that we are talking about yes so what was the butterfly collecting season? It was, you know, six weeks in late summer. If you are going to chase them one by one, you won't catch very many. So next step for a bride was to raise a flock of butterflies. So this butterfly collecting season, you know, it was somewhere in the last six weeks of late summer. And he said that if you keep on catching one by one, it will take very long for you to catch those species of butterfly. So the next step was what? For Richard a. Bright to raise flock of butterflies. He would catch a... F okay, so this is basically what he caught hold of. We'll come to this uh, graph soon. He would catch a female monarch take her eggs and raise them in his basement through their life cycle. From egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult butterfly. Then he would tag the butterfly's wings and let them go. For several years, his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. So what he did was, he would catch a female monarch. Okay, and when the monarch would, uh, when the female monarch would lay eggs, he would raise them in his basement through their life cycle. So from egg to caterpillar, from caterpillar to pupa, and from pupa to an adult butterfly. That's the life cycle of a butterfly. And then what would he do? He would tag, he would, you know, he would attach a sticker on the butterfly's wings and let them go. For several years, his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development. So for, this continued for many, many years. And in his basement, his basement, the basement of his house was, you know, uh, basically uh, it was a house to different monarchs. So this we have is the number and kind of butterflies that he has collected in six weeks. These are the names. Proceeding further. Eventually, I began to lose interest in tagging butterflies. It's tedious and there's not much feedback, a bright said. In all the time I did it, he laughed. Only two butterflies I had tagged were recaptured and they were not more than 20, 75 miles from where I live. So what happened slowly, slowly, gradually, you know, towards the end, he, he started losing interest in tagging butterflies. He says that it was tedious. It was difficult to do that. And there is not much feedback to this particular Thing. He didn't get a good feedback on this. A bright, in all the time I did it, he laughed. 
only two butterflies i had tagged were recaptured so whatever he had done all this while only two butterflies were tagged sorry only two butterflies were recaptured and that that too not very far away from his house only 75 uh, miles away from where he was staying so just because of this he started losing interest in this in this tagging of butterflies then in the 7th grade he got a hint of what real science is when he entered a county science fair and lost it was really a sad feeling to sit there and not get anything while everybody else had won something a bride said then what happened when he was in 7th grade he got a hint of what real science is he he got an idea of what real science is and how did that happen when he participated in a county science fair and he lost it was really a sad feeling he really felt bad why because he lost and you know everybody else had won something his entry was slides of frock tissues which he showed under a microscope he realized the winners had tried to do real experiment not simply make a neat display already the competitive spirit that drives richard bright was appearing so what did he do in that in that count uh, science county affair basically his entry was for the slides of frock tissues he displayed you know under a microscope how the tissue of a frog will look then he realized the ones who had won the competition they actually performed experiments in front of the audience and that is what science is science does not mean to display something basically you have to perform an experiment in front of the audience so because of this what happened the competitive spirit that drove the drive richard bright was appearing so he was very that is when he realized that okay fine what exactly he should have done for the competition i knew that for the next year's fair i would have to do a real experiment he said the subject i knew most about was the insect word i'd been doing in the past several years so he wrote to dr yuko hart for ideas and back came a stack of suggestions for experiments so he was very sure that okay fine next year when i participate even i have to do a real experiment and the subject he knew the most that was insect work because if you, like i told you he was collecting butterflies when he was in kg so this subject he was well versed in and out he knew the subject very nicely so he wrote to dr yukuhart for ideas and back came stack of suggestions piles of suggestion came back for his experiments those kept a bride busy all through high school and led to prize projects in county an international science fair so losing that one competition where he displayed the tissues of frog okay that was important for him they say failure is the stepping stone to success that's absolutely right when it when we speak about richard ebright he lost and he realized what actually he should have done for the competition and after that there was no looking back with his new idea of performing real experiments gave him many accolades so what happened was he won many you know he won many uh, prizes in the county and international science fairs for his eighth grade project a bride tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years so again in eighth standard he did something different what was that he tried to understand that how these you know uh, how these monarch uh, monarch caterpillars die and that to every few years so that was his research work 
so what happened when he actually started doing a research work on that was he actually successful or again did he did he face a failure that we will see in our next class until we meet next you'll take care of yourselves sairam and bye bye